Shalom, my friends. This is Max Joseph, and I'm here because the time has finally come. The BAFTAs are done, the Globes, the SAG, the Guilds, everything is done. It is time for the predictions, the final predictions. To give a quick rundown, the predictions will be a video that will normally be released on the first of every month and will feature my predictions for the upcoming Academy Awards. Each category would feature the maximum number of nominees possible, with an additional few that are the next in line and the big snub that should make it. But these are my final Oscar predictions, so there's, there's no need to discuss the next in line when we have our nominees, and instead of discussing the snubs, stay tuned for my own Oscar nominations where you'll see all of my snubs and get to see what I, personally, would have winning the Oscar. So, no snubs in this video, we're getting right to the predictions. But before I go into my predictions, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel, and ding that little bell to get notified whenever I post new videos. And so, here are my final predictions for the 2020 Oscars February edition, Best Picture. So, this race is insane. If we look at stats alone, neither of the two frontrunners are guarantees, that being Parasite in 1917. Some important things to note about what most people have as the frontrunner 1917, there's never been a film that won Best Picture without an acting nomination and editing. 1917 would be the first in history, and since 1981, only one film won Best Picture without an editing nomination, which happened to be very recently, Birdman in 2015. BAFTAs are also 0 for 5 over the last 5 years when it comes to predicting Best Picture, so if that stays true, 1917 isn't our winner. But on the flip side, 22 out of 30 PGA winners went on to win Best Pick, and 1917 can claim that this year. And I'll talk more about the other wins it has in just a minute. Now, of course, giving the win to Parasite is dicey because no foreign film has ever won Best Picture, and only 11 films in history ended up winning Best Picture without an acting nomination, the last being Slumdog Millionaire. So those chances also don't look too promising. However, I also keep hearing that Parasite's win at SAG wasn't that big a deal, and that's just not true. First, no foreign film has ever won that award, so that alone is literally historic. Second, a majority of Academy voters are actors, so Parasite winning is big. Does that mean it's a guarantee? Of course not. Last year, Black Panther won SAG, but it certainly can't hurt its chances. So all of that being said, you might be asking, what is the right choice? I think the right choice and the smart choice is 1917, which is what I'm going to go with. Based on all of its wins this season, Globe, PGA, DGA, and BAFTA. 1917 won PGA, which is the only precursor that uses a preferential ballot. And you know what won on a preferential ballot last year? Green Book. Parasite has SAG and the Writers Guild. So, again, if you want to go based on key wins, you, you have to go with 1917, especially because there are people who are voting for the Oscars who haven't even seen Parasite because they, and I quote, don't want to deal with the subtitles. And I'm so mad at myself for not choosing Parasite because that is what my gut is telling me to do, it's what my heart is telling me to do, and like I did for the SAG Awards, I want to will it into the universe, and if it does end up winning, I'll, I'm never going to forgive myself. But I hope I'm wrong, and I, I never forgive myself. I also don't think Parasite is the wrong choice, it has, it has so much love behind it. And to be clear, I want Parasite to win, but I would be thrilled with 1917 winning. It is a marvel and a technical masterwork, and is very, very close to being in my top 10 of the year. Because it comes down to this, I'd rather say I knew I was going to be wrong and I was right, or holy shit, I was f***ing right! Best Director. So I am going purely off the wins here, and I think Sam Mendes is your winner. DGA tells us the most, since 2000, the winner of DGA went on to win director at Oscar 16 times, which includes most recently, eight of the last nine. Mendes also directed the holy hell out of this movie. It is so precisely choreographed and feels like a play on Broadway put to film but shot as a video game, and only a Tony Award winning director teamed with arguably the greatest cinematographer of all time could have pulled this off. This one is pretty much a done deal, but there's Bong waiting 
right behind him, and that would be insanity. If Bong wins director, I really think Parasite is winning Best Picture. I don't think that would be a split, but who knows? Actress in a leading role. <sighs> Unfortunately, these acting categories are just, they're done. The only good thing about it is that for all four, it would be shocking and awesome if literally anyone else won. But I just don't really see it happening. Zellweger, she hasn't lost yet. She got Globe, SAG, BAFTA, and Critics. If we would have seen anyone else win one of these, it would be more of a competition, but alas. Zellweger is on her way to her second Oscar for portraying one of the greatest performers of all time, Judy Garland. Actor in a leading role. Similar to actress in a leading role, Phoenix has absolutely demolished the competition this year. He also took home Globe, SAG, BAFTA, and Critics' Choice. Phoenix will finally win his long overdue Oscar. Not that someone is due an Oscar, but it's his time, and more importantly, he deserves it. It also helped that his SAG and BAFTA speeches were incredible. I was a little nervous voters would get a little turned off after his Globe speech, but then SAG and BAFTA happened, and as soon as he talked about Heath Ledger, it was done. Brilliant. Also, just a special shout out to Antonio Banderas and Jonathan Price. Both finally earned their first nominations, and I hope that one day they actually win it. I love them. Actress in a supporting role. I feel like a broken record, but yep, Globe, SAG, BAFTA, and Critics. She's been the favorite since the beginning, and she'll be the favorite coming out of it. She's also been nominated at nearly every film festival. The Academy loves her, and they're gonna just be itching to give her her first Academy Award. But hey, Scarlett Johansson made Academy Award history and became only the 12th person to be nominated for two different Academy Awards in the same year, so, you know, mazel tov to her. Actor in a supporting role. Last but certainly not least, Brad Pitt. Like all three acting categories before this, he too won the Globe, SAG, BAFTA, and Critics' Choice. So he'll finally earn his first acting Oscar. It's Pitt, it's always been Pitt, it's gonna be an awesome moment when it happens, and he'll get a standing ovation, and it'll be just dandy. Sorry that there isn't much to say in these categories, but unfortunately nothing exciting or different really happens, so that's all I got. It doesn't take away to how exciting these wins will be and how deserved they are, but there's just not much conversation to be had about sweeps. Original screenplay. Bong Hive! So this is one of the big reasons why I think that Parasite can still win Best Picture. I was going back and forth between Parasite and Hollywood because that's what this is between, and I finally decided on Parasite because it won BAFTA. If Hollywood won that, I would have gone with it, and I'm not counting it out quite yet. It did win the Globe, which Parasite wasn't eligible for, but it won Critics' Choice. So, like, the love is there, and Tarantino has already won the damn award twice, so why not make it a third? I'm just hoping they give it to the most original and brilliant screenplay of the year, if you ask my opinion. I'll also say, if in some strange world 1917 wins screenplay, it's winning director and it's winning picture. Easily. Baumbach is happy to be nominated, and his time will come. And last, a shout out to the Academy for actually nominating Knives Out. Bravo. I love that. Adapted screenplay. Jojo <laughs> Rabbit. I was between Jojo and Little Women, but because of what just happened at BAFTA, I think Jojo got it. No adapted screenplay that won both BAFTA and WGA has lost the Oscar. So I think that Taika Waititi will earn his first Oscar and I will lose my shit. However, this one isn't a done deal at all. It is between another someone fighting for her first Oscar, Greta Gerwig. If we look at who won what so far, again, JoJo won Writers Guild and BAFTA, Little Women has USC and Critics' Choice. It wouldn't be too surprising if Greta got it in the end, and it would also be amazing, and I'd scream of happiness. If it goes to either of these two, I'll be thrilled. The only surprise would be Irishman, and that would be super surprising, but would also be a solid way to award Irishman in one of the, the big, big categories, and may actually end up being its only win on the night. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Animated feature. This is shaping up to be one of the most exciting races this season, and I'm all about it. Almost every one of these nominees has won something, and here's the breakdown. Missing Link won the Globe and VFX Society. Toy Story 4 won PGA and Critics' Choice, 
and Klaus won Annie and BAFTA. So it's literally anyone's game, except for How to Train Your Dragon and I Lost My Body. Those two feel like they're out of the race, unfortunately. And no film has ever won the Oscar without a BAFTA nomination. So if that stays true, the only options are Toy Story 4 and Klaus. That means Missing Link, How to Train Your Dragon, and I Lost My Body are again, they're out. And I've been saying it since the beginning, when in doubt, go with Pixar, and if they do end up winning, it'll be number 10 for the studio when it comes to animated feature film. If Toy Story 4 doesn't win, some history could be made. Netflix has never won animated, Leica has never won somehow, and the How to Train Your Dragon franchise has never won. If there is a spoiler, it would be Klaus, because it has the Bafton Annie, which bodes well for it. And this is probably the one, maybe two categories I may change up right before Sunday night. But if I do that, I'll let you know on my community page. Personally, I'm hoping for Klaus. As much as I love Toy Story 4, I would love to see something original win. Cinematography. My friends, it is Roger Deakins' world, and we just happen to be living in it. Like I had said last month, 1917 is one of the greatest technical achievements in the history of cinema, and thankfully, all the voters know it. There has never been something like 1917, and I think that we'll see many more try and replicate something like it. With this nomination, Roger Deakins earned his 15th nod and will earn his only second win. It would be shocking if it was anything else. Almost as shocking as when Suicide Squad won makeup and hairstyling. Production design. This is juicy. I can see three potential winners here, none of which would be surprising at all. I'm gonna go with Hollywood because I believe that voters will just default to it. Robert Ling's work in Hollywood feels like the movie with, I, I guess the best way to say it is the most production design. At least that is super visible. The whole movie is literally about Hollywood and I've said it before, and I'll continue to say, Hollywood loves Hollywood. But 1917 won the BAFTA, and since 2010, five have translated into an Oscar. So it's not an overwhelming majority, but still enough to keep your eye on that stat. For Parasite, although they literally built that house from scratch, I think the fact that it really only takes place in two central locations might give voters some pause. I hope it wins because I think it's the movie that has the most character behind the design. Costume design. Like adapted screenplay, this is once again between Little Women and Jojo Rabbit, with Hollywood maybe coming into spoil. Little Women has the BAFTA win, and Jojo has the CDG, which is the costume designers. Both have solid wins, but I think Little Women has a little more love here. And if I'm correct in predicting adapted screenplay going to Jojo, this would be the one and only award giving to Little Women, and will also excitingly give Jacqueline Duran her second Oscar. Shout out to Duran because she did the costumes for 1917. What an icon, what an unbelievable year for her. Film editing. I, I have no idea. This is nearly impossible. It's between Ford v Ferrari and Parasite, and you can flip a coin on this one, and I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna kinda YOLO it, and I'm gonna go with Parasite. Both have key victories. Parasite has Ace and Ford v Ferrari has BAFTA. And I had said to myself that if Ford v Ferrari ended up with BAFTA, I'd give it my vote. But I'm gonna be bold on this one, which would mean that Ford v Ferrari may not win a single Oscar on Sunday. Now, if Irishman somehow wins this, I think it may actually have a bigger night than anyone is anticipating, but I don't really see that happening. Makeup and hairstyling. Bombshell won MUAH for makeup effects and contemporary hair makeup. It won BAFTA, it won critics. Tis over, my friends. It taking BAFTA was the icing on the cake. If Joker somehow pulled BAFTA off, I maybe could have swayed to Joker, but I believe that this was Bombshell's to lose, and it's got this in the bag. And Joker really is the only other one that could pull off a surprise because it also won period makeup at MUAH, but it just isn't enough to beat the juggernaut that is Bombshell. Also, Bombshell deserves the win, although they should really just rename this award to the best prosthetics because the prosthetics on uh, uh, Vice, Darkest Hour, they, 
it's just called the prosthetics award now. It, they don't really care about the hair. So from now on, I'm just going to go on the best prosthetics and the best prosthetics went to John Lithgow in Bombshell. Sound editing. So these sound categories are actually a little tricky and exciting this year. With both 1917 and Ford v Ferrari winning at the Motion Picture Sound Editor Awards, we could maybe see a split happen between the two. But I'm going to play these two categories safe and choose the best picture frontrunner 1917. Because chances are more likely that 1917 will take both sound awards instead of Ford v Ferrari. So I think that having 1917 is the stronger option. If you do that, you'll most likely at least get one of the two sound awards. And if I'm right, you'll get both of them. Sound mixing. So like I had just said in sound editing, I think the smart move is going with 1917. But I must admit, I'm hesitant in 1917 here. I'm going with it, but if there was a split, I think this is where Ford v Ferrari would be. But I'm not confident it could swap. So although Ford v Ferrari won Cinema Audio Society and 1917 didn't even get nominated there, I just, I still say go with 1917 because it won BAFTA. And chances are high that it'll win at least one of the sound awards. It's too dangerous to go with Ford v Ferrari. I also think that the lines are really starting to blur when it comes to sound design, at least in voters' minds. So by next year, very likely, the sound categories will merge into one. So I just, I think that it's easier for voters to just vote for one film. And if they do replace it, I hope they replace it with something like casting, stunt, and my personal vote, voiceover. As long as it's not popular film. Visual effects. Another super exciting category. So when there's a Best Picture nominee in the visual effects lineup, it tends to go to that film. Five of the last six times it happened in the last 10 years, it went to something in that Best Picture lineup. So if that's true, it's between 1917 and Irishman. And because 1917 is the Best Picture frontrunner, or one of them, it won BAFTA, and in my opinion has remarkable visual effects, I'm, I'm, I'm going with it. Just because Irishman may have more visual effects that are more noticeable doesn't mean that it'll win or should win. I think sometimes it's the movies where you can't even tell their visual effects. That's the more powerful one. Also, I have spoken to Academy voters who have been turned off by the visual effects in Irishman. They were distracted by it. And also, somehow, this is the award that Irishman has the best chance of winning. Not director, screenplay, visual effects. If you told me that six months ago that Irishman, their only hope is visual effects and will end up winning zero Oscars, I would have laughed directly into your face. But it really does look like Irishman will become the fourth film in history to be nominated for 10 Oscars and not win a single one. Now wait a minute, my friends. Don't forget about Avengers Endgame. This could be sort of a, this is for everything you've done since 2008, thank you, kind of thing. And I would be thrilled about it. And shockingly, this will be the first visual effects win for Marvel. I'll be thrilled for 1917. I will be ecstatic for Avengers. Original score. My friends, so it looks like Hildur is gonna take home the Oscar. She got Globe, BAFTA, SCL, Critics' Choice. It is just donezo, which is awesome. And hopefully inspires future filmmakers to maybe branch out to more than just the normal go-to writers, because my goodness, what an amazing find Hildur was. And maybe even she can inspire the younger generation to see a woman on stage accepting the award for best score. It's going to be a beautiful moment and she should be so proud of herself. And she's also the first female conductor of the Oscar orchestra. Now all that being said, and truly no disrespect to her, I still think 1917 should win. Thomas Newman's score tells a better story. But if any other film were to win, I'd want it to be Joker. It's in my top three of the season, along with The Last Black Man in San Francisco. So Newman, he'll just have to wait to earn his first Oscar. Maybe the 16th time will be the charm. And a shout out to John Williams on earning his 52nd nomination. And thank you for one of the best Star Wars scores to date. Original song. So as you know, I've had Into the Unknown as my winner forever. 
But then the Golden Globes happened, and Elton John said that he and Bernie had never won an award together, and the second that was said was the second they won the Oscar. I think that that speech was one of the biggest factors of them being the frontrunner. And also, like, who wouldn't want to see Elton John make a speech? If they do give it to Into the Unknown, it just means that Robert and Kristen Anderson Lopez will never lose an Oscar, and I can never vote against them, ever. There's also a small chance that they gave it to Cynthia Erivo, which would give Erivo her EGOT and make her the youngest EGOT winner in history, beating out John Legend. And a fun fact, Erivo is only the third person to be nominated for song and acting. It actually happened most recently with Lady Gaga and Mary J. Blige. International feature film. This is my second category that I feel most confident on, as does the rest of the world. It's actually the category I feel most confident on. There's no way that Parasite loses this. Similar to Roma last year, it's been the clear frontrunner forever. If you want to put all your money on only one category, this is it. And if you even want to bring up what it's won, BAFTA, Globe, Critics' Choice, every festival, it's done. And this will also be the first nomination and win for South Korea. Documentary feature film. Well, my friends, I was right. Apollo 11 Miss, which gives a clear path of victory to the Netflix doc, American Factory. I also think voters know that the Obamas are attached to the film and want to award the doc because of that alone. But this is maybe the second or third category I may switch up the day of. There's something in my gut telling me to give this to Forsama. I don't know why, but just something is telling me to do it. And also a shout out to Honeyland, which is the first film in history to be nominated for both documentary and international feature film, animated short. So I will be thrilled with either Hair Love or Kit Bull. Both are beautiful and shocker to no one made me cry. But I think that Matthew Cherry's Hair Love seems to be getting the most love and attention, so I'm going with that. But wouldn't be surprised if Pixar does the thing that Pixar does and just wins everything. Documentary short. This really could be anything, but because Learning to Skateboard won the BAFTA, I'm gonna go with that. It's probably the only thing to go off of. I guess the title is really good if voters don't watch it. I know that's not how it should go, but sometimes it does. Live action short. The Neighbor's Window is the most likely to be made into an eventual feature film, and so I think that will be the one that voters have the easiest time watching. Also, the director of Neighbor's Window has been nominated three times before for documentary, and this is their first narrative short. Those are my final predictions for the 92nd Academy Awards February edition. Let me know what you have predicted in the comments. Agree? Disagree? Let me know. And so my friends, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like this video, give me your thoughts in the comments, subscribe to this channel, as well as follow me on Twitter and Instagram at mjoseph492. Like my page on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Person. And if you really love me, please consider being a patron on Patreon, where you can get patron-only content, guest interviews, giveaways, and lots more. You can even give me a film to review, a 10th of the month top 10 category, or a song to sing. And that video will be dedicated to you. Shalom, my friends.